So with this crooked and twisted, what are we going to do to fix it? Today's video is being brought to you by Bright Cellars, a better way to enjoy wine. And what a perfect opportunity to make a little wine rack. This wine rack has kind of an industrial feel to it with its heavy plate, heavy bars with mortise and tenon joints joining the front and the back together. And it's a design that you can adapt to make either larger or smaller. We'll talk about the wine a little bit later on in the video, but for now, let's get started on the project. The first step, we'll need to start by laying this out and then cutting some four inch holes in the front and the back. I chose to do this with a hole saw. A plasma cutter might be the better option if you have access to a plasma cutter that'll cut this, but I don't. We have the holes cut that the wine bottles are going to go into. That probably took me close to two hours to get through all of that cutting. It was really slow going, really noisy, and the cutter really started to slow down the third, fourth hole. But oddly, it started cutting better for the fifth and the sixth hole. So the last two holes went faster than the first two holes, and I'm not really sure why that is. As a little bonus, we got a whole bunch of quarter inch discs that will be nice little bases for some sort of a project, or maybe really heavy wax pans for some sort of a big candle holder. And I've got some ideas for some great big candle stands that hopefully I'll be able to get around to maybe this fall before winter comes on. Now for me, these are awfully sterile looking. I want to do something that adds some more forged texture to this. So I'll start by upsetting the top of this to give that some character. Put a nice bevel down the long edges. I think the bottom where it sits on the counter I'm going to leave alone to make sure I don't introduce anything that might scratch up somebody's countertop. Putting the bevel down and tipping the piece up helps get a smoother bevel because the face of the anvil is what's refining the bevel instead of the face of the hammer, so you get a smoother finish in the long run.
And I'll just put these over the cone mandrel to make sure everything is still around. And of course the second piece is done pretty much just like the first piece. I'd like to take a moment and thank Bright Sellers, today's sponsor, for helping make this video possible. Now Janet and I enjoy a little bit of wine in the evening sometimes, but we're not what you'd call wine snobs. You'd go to the liquor store, or now the grocery stores all have wine, and the selection is overwhelming, never quite sure what to buy. With Bright Sellers, you can take a quiz online, and they will help match your taste with the appropriate wines whether that's all white wines, all red wines, or a mix of the two. Or you can let them surprise you. We prefer red wines. And if you are interested in learning more about the wines and what makes each wine unique and different, where it came from, heck, even the alcohol content, they send out a little set of information cards that talks about each wine that gives you all of that information. So whether you're enjoying a glass of wine with a good steak, relaxing in the evening, or you just want to take the snobbery out of buying wine, Bright Sellers has found a better way to enjoy wine. Just take the seven question quiz and they'll match you with wines from all over the world. There are different plans to choose from and your satisfaction is guaranteed. Thanks Bright Sellers for giving my followers a limited time offer of $100 off their subscription and a free wine tote. Click the link in the description, take the quiz and get started today. To space the front and the back of the wine rack, I'm going to put some round rods in. Those will be 10 and through. So I need to drill a bunch of holes through here. You could punch the holes, but I want to go for the accuracy of drilled holes. I think four sets of rods will look best. Top, bottom, and between the holes on the side, and that'll be four, eight total. Because of our upset here, I think these holes are going to end up a little bit too close. So I'm going to bring them down, even if it doesn't perfectly match the spacing. The next issue is how far apart should these be? Wine bottles come in various shapes and sizes, and you would hate to have one slide out as it slid down towards the neck end of the bottle. So I'm going to use some welding magnets to set this up temporarily and figure out what that spacing should be. That ends up being six and a quarter inches, which is about 160 millimeters, it looks like. Then the next question is half inch bars or five eighth inch bars. I not only like the visual aesthetic of the five eighths bar better, but it's also going to give me a bigger shoulder on my tenon, and that will make for a more secure assembly. So we're going with the five eighths bar. And I think cutting these seven and a half inches will give me plenty of room on either end of the bar to get a good rivet to them. So you take eight of these and 16 tenons to get this assembled. I'm going to come in a half inch from each end, but just a little bit of a groove in with an angle grinder that will give me a good reference point that I'll be able to catch with my butcher tools and make sure I get all of these exactly the same. That leaves me just a little bit long in between. That'll be six and a half inches in between. And then I will upset the tenons back with a monkey tool to get a good shoulder. And that should give me my extra quarter inch. In the end, the most important thing is 
that all eight bars are exactly the same length. That leaves an awfully fat groove. I think maybe a real shallow cut on the porta band might do a better job and be a little bit more accurate. I went a little bit too deep with the butcher tool, so I've got a little depression right here at the shoulder. For this project, that's probably not a real big deal, but that does create a weak spot, and in general, it's not a good idea. For the rest of these, I'll have to be more careful. Then I'll clean up the shoulder with a monkey tool. And of course, doing this under the power hammer is much more efficient. Then I'm going to put just a little bit of light textures on the bars so they don't look quite so new. My goal is for a bar six and a quarter inches when I'm done. I'm a sixteenth over that now, so when it cools, it might be just perfect. 
There are eight of these bars total, which makes 16 tenons. So I'm just gonna get to work and go ahead and get those done. The process looks exactly the same for all 16 of them. Looks like five of these are all the same size, so I consider that lucky. One of them is just a hair short. I think I'll be able to draw this out cold. It doesn't need to stretch more than about a sixteenth of an inch. And two of them are about a sixteenth of an inch long. So I'll heat those up and go back with a monkey tool and upset that shoulder back a little bit on each end. And we should be good to go. Maybe that will need to be done hot. I took the time to thread the ends of all the tenons so that I can assemble this with nuts, get the whole thing assembled, make sure it looks right and that it's not twisted or tweaked in any way. I can take it apart if I need to fix those things, but then I can remove one nut at a time to set the rivet heads. I did think about leaving a square nut on this as the finished fastening and I really kind of like the look, but I think I still like the look of the rivet just enough better and Janet likes the look of the rivet better. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll take one nut off at a time, rivet that down, set the rivet, then proceed all the way around at both sides. I've also gone over this checking for any sharp places or snags that might cut somebody or cause a problem. Cleaned all those up on the belt grinder and then kind of polished up the bottom of this to make sure that's not going to scratch somebody's countertop. I suppose if you're really worried about it, you might try to put some sort of felt or leather on there or maybe even set this on a base of some sort. But personally, I think that's going a bit far. Anyways, now I got to bolt the whole thing together. It sits nice and solid on the anvil and it doesn't look like it's twisted in any way. This also gives us one final chance to make sure the wine bottles fit the way I want them to.
I'm going to jump diagonally as I work these, kind of like putting the lug nuts on a tire. That gets the wine rack all riveted up, but we have multiple problems. For one thing, I ended up putting a twist in it while I was riveting it, even though it sat perfectly flat before I riveted it. And another, I think it leans back just a little bit. So somewhere I've done something to this that is causing a problem. So with this crooked and twisted, what are we gonna do to fix it? My first inclination was to bring it up to heat in the gas forge, clamp it up to my heavy work table, and just kind of bring it back into straight that way, cool it down, take the clamps off, and see if it kept its shape. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite fit back into that forge. I could fire up the old coal forge, but trying to bring this much material up to an even heat would be really difficult in the coal forge. So I think I'm gonna to have to try and wrestle this thing cold and some sort of a really big lever that fits into these holes, and hopefully I'll be able to get this thing straight again. Absolutely no guarantees at this point. Well, that's better, but it's a long way from being perfect. I find that really disappointing. It was going together so well with the threaded connections, so probably I should have left well enough alone and just gone with those square nuts. I liked that look. I like this look a little bit better, but given the choice between rivet heads or straight, I'd rather have straight and have the square nuts. But I was able to grind the feet down a little bit, take the high spots off, so at least it sits solid. It'll look fine sitting on a counter. Next thing to do is put some finish. And since I've been experimenting with pine tar, I'm gonna go ahead and put some pine tar finish on this. Mix one part pine tar to one part linseed oil, more or less, I just guess by eye. And the manufacturer recommends warming the pine tar to about 100 degrees before you apply it, so I'll do that. And see how long it takes to dry on this. I'm putting this on pretty liberally, and then I'll come back after about an hour or so and wipe off any excess. I like the way the pine tar finish looks. I need to experiment with that some more. And I really like the way this wine rack came out, other than that little bit of misalignment. It does sit nice and solid now because I ground down the high spots on the bottom. But it's still just a little bit off front to back. Probably nobody's ever going to notice that. And since this is what I'm going to keep, I can live with it. I wish I could tell you exactly what I did that made this twist. I suspect it's the way I hammer the rivets that I'm putting the same curve in every time and kind of pulling it around one direction, but I can't be absolutely sure. And I think if I had a forge this would fit back into, I could probably get it straightened out. And who knows, maybe I'll call around and talk to some of my buddies and see if anybody's got a forge that's that big. It's one of the benefits to knowing some other blacksmiths. Once again, I would like to thank Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. It was their sponsorship that inspired this project. I don't know if I ever would have thought of this otherwise. So I'm really glad they reached out to me. Janet and I are going to enjoy the wine. And now that the work's done, I can actually have a little bit. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. No drinking till the work day's done. We'll see you for the next video. Very good.